We're moving to the next speakers, uh, Vincent Coopers, Coopers. Um, who's going to present uh, motor phenotypes, multivariate association with sleep, mental health, and gray matter volume. Go ahead. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, so I would like to um, address the question, how do motor phenotypes connect to sleep and mental health, and how does that relate to gray matter volume? I have no disclosures. Um, so talking about motor phenotypes, um, here I refer to uh, physical activity, um, strength, cardiorespiratory fitness, and fine motor skill, and sleep, um, covers aspects such as insomnia, um, sleep duration, chronotype, and mental health, um, recent depressive symptoms, and neuroticism. And while um, a lot of stu studies have investigated um, individual motor measures, how they relate to um, sleep and mental health, um, not so much has been done to look at the multivariate perspective. Um, how these domains um, in the broader sense, connect to each other, and how the neurobiological basis of that um, relationship looks like. So in a previous study um, of us, um, we found that in young adults, um, better sleep and also mild depressive symptoms together with um, wide-ranged gray matter volume alterations were linked to better motor performance. And this was replicated in a different uh, cohort of young adults. So from that, um, knowing how it looks like in young adults, we um, were wondering how does this uh, multivariate association um, looks like in older adults. And then we wanted to um, take a step, go a step further, um, not just take the um, population-wide view, but um, see if we could predict individual level expressions of motor sleep mental health phenotypes based on gray matter volume. So for the first step, we used um, regularized canonical correlation analysis. The idea is relatively simple. Instead of correlating individual items in a, like in a normal Pearson correlation, we are correlating two sets of variables. And we do so by finding the linear combination of um, the individual items. These linear combinations are called canonical variates. And then we find the canonical variates that highest correlate with each other. And like in a PCA, we can get different, um, not components here, uh, but I call them canonical variates. Um, we use the UK Biobank cohort, and of the initial 18,000 participants, um, we um, hold out 20%, and then the remaining 80% were used for a hyperparameter tuning. Um, once we selected a model, um, we take the holdout split, project it onto the weights, and um, get a test estimate. We repeated that five times, and then um, performed um, to establish statistical significance test, a permutation test. And um, this um, framework was um, replicated in a different sample, also from the UK Biobank. So what did we find? Um, for first, um, we, we find the first uh, canonical variates. Um, what you can see here on the right side is uh, the canonical correlation um, of the motor and sleep mental health variate with a test correlation of 0.13. And um, this motor variate was driven by a somewhat differential pattern uh, depicting uh, cardiorespiratory fitness positively associated and self-reported physical activity negatively associated to the motor variate. And um, on the um, sleep side, positively um, to intermediate, an intermediate chronotype, normal sleep duration, and negatively to uh, shorter sleep duration, mono, morning chrono chronotype, and uh, mental health um, problems. However, this, um, first, these first canonical variates um, did not replicate in the um, other sample. 
but we found um, a replicable second pair of significant canonical variates. Um, again, a test correlation of 0.11, and here we can see what man, one would maybe expect a bit more, like concordance between reported physical activity and measured uh, cardio fitness, and this links to um, better, um, like a morning chronotype, less snoring during the night and no difficulties of getting up, but also um, recent, less recent depressive symptoms such as tiredness. And as I mentioned, um, this um, pair of canonical variates replicated in a, a second sample of 3,600 participants. Um, and we see very similar pattern um, for the uh, motor variate and also for the sleep and mental health variant, showing uh, the highest loading for the same items. So now moving from that, I mean, it's similar to the um, first results I showed from the young uh, participants. Um, we wanted to take this motor variant and predict it um, in the in individual based on grammar volume. And we took, um, again, data from the UK Biobank, but at the um, a later time point, split it, and then in the uh, first part, um, repeated the um, RCCA um, to define our target, because the motor measures varied a little bit. And then um, in the um, bigger part of these um, two subsamples, we computed gray matter volume based on um, the Schäfer one, uh, 1000 Melbourne subcortical and suit cerebellar atlases and predicted um, the individual motor variates using XGBoost in an 80-20 train test split um, with nested five-fold cross-validation and then um, I will report the out-of-sample predictions on the test set. So this is again uh, the CCA, but now uh, at this, um, in this different sample, um, we can see a very similar pattern to the one we have observed um, in the first step, um, meaning higher uh, self-reported and uh, measured physical activity um, linked to better sleep and mental health. And predicting this, we can um, first see a um, quite strong um, predictive accuracy. Um, what you see here in the x-axis is the uh, um, true motor variates and then on the y the predicted motor variates correlating um, with 0.41. And if we account now for um, age and sex um, on the left side um, at the CCA level, meaning um, at the target level, we can see um, uh, that there is um, obviously a decrease in predictive capabilities, but we were still able to um, predict the motor variates. And then on the right side, you see if we are uh, um, very conservative correcting at both levels, um, also at the feature side, um, we can see um, a correlation of 0.12. So to conclude, um, we found that um, motor performance, um, like in young adults, where it was linked to sleep and depressive symptoms, um, showed a replicable association also in older adults. And we found a somewhat um, differential pattern compared to young adults, um, more like generally sleep and mental health um, was associated to um, motor. Um, phenotypes, and lastly, um, the motor variates were predictable from gray matter volume. I'd like to thank you for coming um, and listening. Um, great team of uh, co-authors, my team, my funders, and yeah, check out these posters. Thank you very much. We got two questions for you. The first one is, do your results change if you change the parcellation of the cortex? Um, I, we have tried uh, different parcellations, but generally it stayed relatively the same. Yeah. 
And the second question was, was permutation testing used to test the significance of the CCA mode? Yeah, so the um, results I've presented were all statistically, statistically significant um, canonical correlations. Thank you very much. I think we have time for another question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to ask if uh, we could use these data to predict the um, um, eventually uh, brain disorders. Like yeah. if there is a correlation with uh, sleep and mental health. Um, you mean as in um, generalizing from this to um, pa participate? Because it's uh, the biobank uh, data set, right? So I, I, I was just wondering if we could use um, sleep and mental health uh, parameters to see whether they uh, can predict uh, the um, um, uh, emerging of uh, brain disorders like, I don't know, um, Alzheimer's or... Sure, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the UK Biobank has a lot of data on that and as it's longitudinal, um, yeah, it allows to... Thank you. Thanks.